Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Carlos Rivera. Always a pleasure to get with you in the morning, bright and early, early in the morning, we will rise up and seek the Lord. Amen. And that's, I love that. I love starting off my day in the presence of God. And we're right here in Richmond, Virginia today. And I want to uh, excuse, or should I say, apologize for the technical difficulties yesterday. Uh, but we're going to jump right into God's word today. Thank you guys for coming on Facebook Live. And of course, those that are now coming on the, on the conference call as well. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us this uh, this morning. And of course, uh, so I want to go ahead and get right into the word of God and kind of, uh, kind of almost uh, kind of repeat a little bit of the stuff I said yesterday because I felt so bad that, that we kind of dropped off. But I want to go ahead and put this on and we're going to post this on Facebook and everything else that we normally do. And uh, But I want you to get the whole scope of the word, amen, that we that kind of messed up yesterday. So anyway, praise God. So today, I want to entitle our, our, our gathering here today, Discover Your Purpose. Discover Your Purpose. Luke chapter 19, verse 10 says this, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You know, one thing when, when you hear Jesus say these words, you know and you kind of have a good idea that he knows why he's here, right? He knows his purpose on the planet. And you, so, and you know, write this down if you're taking notes, guys. Unbroken focus guarantees success. Unbroken focus guarantees success. See, Jesus understood exactly why he was here. What an example he is to us so that we can also discover our purpose, amen, and know exactly why the Lord put us on this planet. See, everything he said and he did pointed to our Heavenly Father. It sure did. He knew exactly why he was here. He was here to carry out the will of the Father. He spoke about that often and he stayed right on course. You see, knowing your why opens the door to how. Oh man, put that right, take that down, write that down. That is so good. Knowing your why opens the door to how. See, when you learn why you're here, God will instruct you on how to do it. See, when, when you get to that place of discovering your purpose, when you understand that God's plan is supreme in your life and you allow him to reign in your life as well, then we just have to align ourselves, right? Align ourselves with God's word. And we know that he will reveal not just uh, the purpose in our lives, but he'll also reveal the plan and the blueprint, amen? In other words, he'll reveal the instructions that we need on how to do it. You see, God's word reveals your purpose and then contains everything inside of it and the plan and the purpose and, and just, uh, just the schematic that you need, amen, on how to accomplish it. And that is so important for us to understand and to know why God's word is so important uh, for discovering our purpose. You know, many times you might be reading a story in the Bible and all of a sudden that story kind of jumps off the pages and then you begin to, to apply that to your own life. And then you realize that God is revealing something to you through a story, through a scripture that really enlightens you to who you are and who God wants you to be as well. Listen, one thing that's so important about discovering your, your purpose is you, when you dis, when discovering your purpose eliminates distractions. Discovering your purpose eliminates distractions. Why is that? The, the reason is because when you know your purpose and, and things begin to distract you or disrupt you or try to pull you away from it, right? You know that these things are not things that you need to be involved with. They're, they're, they're not things you need to connect with in any way. So you're able to, to, to kind of eliminate them, push them out of the way because if they don't line up, uh, with the, with the uh, with your purpose and what God wants to do in your life, then those things will be obvious. See, when you don't know your purpose, then distractions are just the norm, right? Because things just kind of happen. You kind of go with the flow this way. You go to the left. You go to the right because you don't really have a direct course. When you have your purpose, when you discover that, then you know that God will start beginning. Will will begin to start. Uh, laying out the, the groundwork. Amen. The Bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered of God. So you know that when your purpose is revealed, then your steps can be ordered in the direction of God's plan. See, once you know why you're here, that then then anything that hinders or, 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 or impedes uh, your purpose, your plan is a diversion. 
We know it's just the enemy trying to distract us and either try to slow us down or completely take us out of our game, right? Uh, and accomplishing God's assignment. And you see, it's so important for us to make that the purpose of our life. I believe that the first thing we need to discover in our lives, and if you haven't done this yet, listen, you tune into the grow class because the grow class, we go through a process. And of course, you can find out more about that uh, online here. And we do a, a Right now for the month of April, we'll be doing the grow class on Zoom. But check it out. In May, we're coming in the house, y'all. We're coming in the house. So anyway, to do the grow class. But discovering your purpose is so important because once you got, once you're on track, you can tell the things that are not part of that plan. Amen. And you can avoid them, go over them, go through them. Come on in Jesus name, right? And then of course, I believe that part of discovering your purpose is also creating an atmosphere around yourself where the Holy Spirit can move, right? And I and I do that and I think hope I hope I hope a lot of us do this, right? Listen to anointed music. That's right. Listen to godly music. In 1 Samuel 16, 23, it says this. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, the king, that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Wow, what a powerful, powerful example of what anointed music can do. See, anointed music creates an atmosphere. Listen, I'll write this down if you're taking notes. Create the climate that unlocks the best of you. Create a climate that unlocks the best of you. See, God's music drives evil spirits away. Now, in this particular case, I believe that God put that, allowed that evil spirit to be on Saul because then Saul would try to find relief. And that's how David, come on, went from the pasture to the palace. Come on, somebody. He changed his address because when he stepped in and began to play that anointed music, then it moved David from where he was and positioned them in the palace with Saul the king. What a powerful thing. See, godly music drives away all the, the depression and all these thoughts that we have and, and the enemy trying to trying to bring you down and discourage you. Amen. See, listen to music that glorifies the heavenly father. There's so much music out there, man. Listen, music has a spirit and you got to be careful of the kind of spirit, the kind of music you're listening to, because even though the beat is good, you might know all the words, but some of the words, when you start listening to them, you're going, man, are you serious? It's talking about all this crazy stuff sometimes. And, and at the end of the day, we have to guard ourselves, amen, guard our hearts and our minds. The Bible says to keep your mind on things that are wholesome and pure and noble, amen. And we need to listen to music that glorifies the Heavenly Father so that music builds our faith. It's anointed of God. And of course, the people that are playing it are anointed of God. And you know, when godly music enters, depression and discouragement must exit. Come on, somebody. Write that down if you're taking notes. When godly music enters, depression and discouragement must exit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, I believe that creating that atmosphere around you, right? Discovering your purpose, creating that climate around you is so important because so many people are running from God's calling. That's right. So many people are running from God's purpose. Listen, don't run from your calling. Write that down right now in the comments. Don't run from your calling. Jeremiah chapter one, verse five says this. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Of course, some, some scriptures say, well, before I, I formed you in your mother's womb, and before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Wow, what a powerful, powerful mandate. Jeremiah received this calling from the Lord. And, and, and that was so, what a powerful revelation to know that God forms us. Listen, your mama and your daddy might have put you together. They might have conceived you, but God formed you. God planted all his attributes inside of you. God did everything and equipped you with everything you needed to accomplish his assignment. So write this down. Embrace your assignment. Embrace it. Listen, no matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what it is, 
You know, I remember my son Gabriel many years ago, uh, and this was such a blessing because we've been praying for our children all our lives, all their lives as they were little babies, right? We've been praying over them and declaring God's word. And when he came up to me, I think he was about 17 years old, and he said, Daddy, you know, I'm tired of, I'm tired of, of avoiding what I know is the obvious. I know God has called me, so I need, so I need to submit to God's calling. Do you, do you realize how powerful that was for me as a father to hear my son ready to embrace his calling? And now he's in full-time ministry down in Florida, right? Um, ministering at a great church down there. And, you know, it's powerful to just see your children and your offspring just, you know, also walking in their purpose. And I believe that when we're faithful to God and we pray over our children consistently, even if they get sidetracked, they'll always come back. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. They might try to run away from their calling for a while. But I believe the Holy Spirit will bring them back. Amen. And always be encouraged by that. Listen, you may be called to full time ministry. Don't fight it. Listen, sometimes I didn't I didn't know how this was going to happen in my life. I mean, I was a mortgage broker. I was a successful mortgage broker and I had a, a company and uh I was very prosperous and very successful and I had a lot of bills, right? I had a lot, I, I owned properties. I mean, I had a lot going on in my life. I had employees and I just didn't know how God would ever, how I could ever go into full-time ministry. So Rose and I, once we, so we, we were praying about it, right? Like, how does this happen? And man, God showed us how it happened. Come on, man. I always tell people 2008, part of that blame is Pastor Rosa and Carlos praying about full-time ministry. So God just took the whole industry, the mortgage industry, and blew it up. <laughs> and I had to get out. And you know what? It launched me right into full-time ministry. And I'm so happy it did. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but boy, it was challenging. God did so many miracles during that time. It built up our faith, but it launched me into full-time ministry. And I believe there's a lot of people right now rebelling against their calling. Like they don't want to accept it. They don't want to embrace it. See, their passion is there. I believe when you follow your passion, you're always going to be fulfilled. Amen. And when you feel, and especially when we're talking about God's calling. See, and a lot of people that are running from their calling, the enemy has a field day in their lives and wreaks havoc because of it. Because we have to walk in obedience to God, amen? And if he's calling you into the ministry, we need to embrace it. Listen, think back. See if you can remember any moment that God spoke to your heart to become a pastor or an evangelist or a missionary. And listen, so many people do that even by, by vocationally, right? Doesn't mean that you have to quit. Sometimes people work a job as well as ministry and God uses them in a great way. I did it for a long time. I did it for, golly, how many years did I do that for? And I, but, but I was all in with the ministry, right? Even though I had a full-time job, I had a business as well at one, at that point. And, but you know what? God used that moment to prepare me and get me ready for what God is doing today. And that's what I believe God is doing in your life as well. So listen, find a pastor, find a, find a person, find a man of God, a woman of God who will mentor you. Amen. And un unlock that eternal anointing in your life. You see, we need someone to do that. We need somebody to be speaking into our lives, but it requires humility, right? We have to humble ourselves before to allow somebody to speak into our lives and to be able to submit to them, right? And uh, and I believe that, the, but when we do that, my gosh, God begins to do some amazing stuff in our lives. And when we humble ourselves, we can walk in humility and then God can use us in even a greater way. So listen, when you, this is what, what I've learned and this is what I know will happen to you. When you find your place in ministry, you'll never be happy doing anything else. <laughs> That's right. Because when you experience the fulfillment, you know, you, you experience the love and, and the blessing that it is to serve people. When you get to that place in your life, man, it doesn't matter what the circumstances look like. You'd rather be there than anywhere else, amen. Now, part of this as well, now I talked earlier about mentorship, part of this growth into, into your ministry and embracing your calling is you also have to engage correction. Oh, here we go. This is where I, it kind of dropped off yesterday, so I'm so glad we're talking about this today. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse six and 11, it says this, for whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. <clears throat> 
and afflicts every son whom he receives. Now, no discipline for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to them which are applied in this manner. Oh, come on, somebody. Embla em embracing, engaging correction is not always easy, amen? See, wisdom, write this down. Wisdom begins with correction. That's right. Having somebody uh, that can speak into your life, you know, bringing in, like I said earlier, a man of God, a woman of God, and then being able to take the correction without taking it so personal, right? When we understand that iron sharpens iron and you need to have somebody in your life that, that you'll allow to speak into your imperfections, not because they're trying to put you down, but because they're trying to build you up, amen? And there's certain areas and there's certain blind spots that all of us have. That's right. Everybody has blind spots, right? So we try to find people that we love and trust and mentors, right? People who maybe are, are further along than we are in their walk and let them speak about our blind spots. Let them talk about those areas. And sometimes it can be a little abrasive. Sometimes it's hard to swallow, you know, because so, because you have to humble yourself to allow somebody to say that. But at the end of the day, if you receive it, if, if God puts that person in your life and you submit to that, God will do so many wonderful things because anybody that's in authority is also under authority. Listen, write that down. Anybody in authority is also under authority. So you need to respect and honor those that God has placed in your life as leaders and allow them to speak into your life. You know, humble yourself. We don't know everything, amen? And, and we can always learn from someone as well. See, errors must be exposed. Mistakes must be admitted. We all make mistakes. That You know, Pastor Victor and Pastor Carmen mentored me so much, uh, uh, especially during the beginning of my walk with the Lord, and still do, amen? They still point out things that I need to improve. They still coach us, uh, Rosa and I, and, and talk to us about moving things in the uh, forward in the ministry. So we've learned so, so much. I know I have personally from Pastor Carmen, who used to take me on walks through her garden and just pour into me. And I'll tell you what, I, I cherish those days, I cherish those moments, because those conversations were so enlightening and so encouraging as well, as well as correcting. We, we want to be encouraged, come on somebody, but we don't always want to be corrected. But when you take the correction in the right spirit and, and apply it to your life, that I guarantee you there'll be fruit. And the Bible says fruit of righteousness to them who apply this, amen? So it's so important to, when you think back on your life, think of the person who taught you the most. Probably the person that taught you the most was probably a person who probably corrected you the most. <laughs> hey, listen, at the end of the day, we love our moms and dads, right? At the, but you know as well as I do that they spend a lot of time correcting us, right? They spend a lot of time uh, pouring into our lives. So that's why we became the people we became. So I know my mom spent a lot of time correcting me. Sometimes she used a belt. Come on, somebody, keeping it real. Sometimes she used a broomstick. Come on, Mama Rose is a little lady, right? And we were big, so she would just... I I mean, whatever, if we were out of control, right? And our, me and my brothers were, man. So I didn't blame her, right? Uh, and of course, once in a while, she'd take off her chancleta, right? Uh, some of the Spanish folks don't know what I'm talking about. She would just take off her her, her flip-flop or her, her sandal and just, you know, wail that thing, man. That thing was like, forget it or just smack you with it. Just take it off her feet and just hit you. Listen, it sounds kind of crazy, right? <laughs> at the end of the, at the end of the day, kids today would go, I'm going to report you to CPS, you know, uh, uh, protective services, right? All that. Listen, man, at the end of the day, we didn't have all that. If you did something wrong, man, you paid the price for it. And guess what? You learned that way too. And you know what? At the end of the day, we didn't turn out too bad. Amen. We're not, uh, we're not all jacked up. When things are done in order and I discipline my children because I love them, then you know what? The fruit of righteousness comes from that as well. See, I believe this. Uh, and you want to write this down if you want to. Amen. It says this. Hell is full of people who rejected correction. Hell is full of people who rejected correction. Heaven is full of people who accepted it.
Oh, come on, somebody. That's right. Forgiveness, accept the forgiveness, and then begin to correct the way you walk every day and allow the, the word of God, allow the Holy Spirit, allow people of God, men and women of God who God's placed in your life, allow them to speak into your life and then begin to make the changes. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you change because it's hard to change on your own, amen? And I believe God will do some amazing stuff in your life when we submit to God's plan and purpose and God uses people. Amen. And he uses, of course, his Holy Spirit and word to make a difference in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, we're going to get into our time of prayer right now. I hope you received the word of God today. Just lift up your hands right where you are. Begin to praise him. Unless you're driving, don't lift up your hands. Just begin to praise him. Begin to give him glory and honor. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can discover our purpose today. And you are our purpose, oh God. Our purpose is to worship you. Our, our desire, Lord God, is to walk in your ways, oh Father. So in Jesus' name, we just praise you and thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Father God, for providing for us and, and help reveal, let there be a revelation of our purpose and what we do, Father, in the name of Jesus and Father, we thank you and praise you that you're faithful. Father God, you want to reveal your purpose to us that we would discover it and walk in your assignment. <coughs> Excuse me. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you this morning. And Father, help us, Lord God, to be intentional about the music that we listen to, oh God. That we'll listen to godly music. That we'll learn and discover all these, all this music and all these genres, Lord God, that, that are Christian, Lord God. That we can feed our faith every day just by letting music play in the background and create that climate. Create that atmosphere which brings out the very best in us, oh God. Because when your presence dwells in us. We become the best that we can be. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, and we commit to you, Lord God, to feed our faith through the music that we listen to every single day and to create that atmosphere, that atmosphere, Lord God, that would help us to embrace our calling. Help us, Father God, not to run anymore. Even as my, like my son Gabriel said, Father, Dad, I'm tired of, of running from it. I want to embrace it. Let be that person today that says, I'm going to embrace the calling that you have in my life. Uh, some, some of the callings may be difficult and challenging, but God, I can trust you to walk me through the process. So Lord, I pray in Jesus name that we can walk in our assignment, that we can walk fulfilled as Christians in Jesus name, that we can walk in the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, because we know that when we're obedient to your word, oh God, then your word will accomplish great things in our lives, as well as those that you've called us to serve. Because we know your calling always involves people, always connecting people, always ministering to broke the broken and the lost and the hurting, discipling people as well in the name of Jesus, discipling men and women of God as well, Lord God, and being discipled as well, Father God. Our calling also calls us to come under the authority of someone that will help lead us and guide us, just like Elisha came under Elijah, Lord God, and submitted to his leadership until it was his time, oh God. So we just thank you in Jesus' name that you are a God of order and every spiritual thing you place in our lives comes with order and peace. So we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. And we refuse to run. Today we embrace it right now and we praise you for it, Lord God. And Father, in Jesus' name, help us to humble ourselves to accept correction. But we know that your word talks in 2 Timothy about the word of God being good for correction, for encouragement, for admi admi admonition. And we, and Father, God, help us to embrace your word as it corrects us and helps us and guides us. And it reveals our shortcomings and our weaknesses. Father, God, bring people into our lives that love us and love us enough to speak truth into our lives with grace and mercy. So we could, we could receive that in our hearts, Father God, that, that when, that when people speak to us, Lord God, that we'll search our hearts because we may not see those blind spots that other people see. So help us to receive that correction through your Holy Spirit and through people that are filled with your Holy Spirit to speak to us. So help us to embrace those, bring those relationships, those mentors into our lives, Lord God, to help us become the men and women of God that you've called us to be right now in the name of Jesus. 
And Father, right now, we lay hands right now on these prayer requests. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father God, for those that are being saved, that are on our list, those that are being healed right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, for chains to be broken off those that are addicted, those that, that have some kind of habits that are hurting them, Lord God, their hurts, their habits, their hangups. They're stuck right now in Jesus' name. Break those chains of depression. Uh, break those chains of pride, Lord God. Break those chains of gossip right now in Jesus' name. Begin to break chains that hold people back and hinder them from walking fully in your anointing in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for your provision. You're still Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We receive your provision for this day. Thank you that this day you've given us our daily bread. And everything that we need, Lord God, is before us this day. And we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for promotions today that many will be blessed in the name of Jesus, that they'll get what they need from you. And we thank you, Lord God, for prosperity. I speak, Lord God, financial blessings over your people. I pray that they'll reach out, Lord God, and begin to walk in the anointing, Lord God, of prosperity, Lord God. Nothing lacking, nothing missing, overflow, increase. I speak that over them right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you for making a way. I thank you, Father God, that whatever desires we have in our hearts. You said if we delight ourselves in you, that you would give us the desires of our heart. And that's your word. And we receive that right now in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord God, for all the miracles that are taking place, for marriages that are being healed, for families, Lord God, that are being restored right now, for minds that are being renewed right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the victory. Hallelujah. We celebrate answer prayer. We celebrate these miracles manifested right now in the name of Jesus. And we're always going to make sure, oh God, that you get all the glory. Hallelujah. That you get all the honor and that you get all the praise in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together right now. Begin to praise the Lord. Begin to give him glory and honor. Amen. Begin to glorify him right now in Jesus' name. And Father, listen, I want to close out. What a wonderful session. You can see why I was so, I really wanted to make sure we completed this thing when we had that technical difficulty yesterday. But listen, I want to close with Exodus chapter 9, verse 16. This is something I believe that God spoke to Moses, but he's going to speak it to us today. And here's what it says, Exodus chapter 9, verse 16. But indeed, for this purpose, I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. All, I got to repeat that one. I'm going to speak this over you right now. But indeed, for this purpose, I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Oh, man, I, I tell you, that's Exodus chapter 9, 16. I speak that over you right now. I declare that word just like God spoke that to Moses. Listen, I speak that over you and myself right now, that that is your, pur that is your purpose in life. And discover that purpose, then run with it, right? Begin to run because God has called you and he's going to show, come on, that he can show his power in you. The Bible says that in, in, in I think it's Galatians 3.20, right? It says, the uh, uh, for my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than I can ever ask or think according to the spirit, according to the power that works in us. Come on, somebody, to accomplish all that God has. Listen, powerful, powerful. Receive that word today and walk in God's blessing, in God's anointing. Amen. And know that God has a great purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Listen, let me pray over you the, um, this morning. As we uh, end our session, Heavenly Father, I pray your blessing upon your people, oh God. Bless them mightily. Bless them and keep them. Shine your face upon them, oh God. Be gracious to them, Lord. And Father, just lift up your countenance towards them and give them the peace that surpasses all understanding in Jesus' name.
Listen, continue praying for our nation. Continue praying for pastors and leaders. We need revival in the church. The church needs to come back to its first love. The church needs to be on fire, amen, and be, and be, and be consumed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because it's time for the church to walk in the supernatural. Come on, somebody. To walk in the power of God. To see chains broken off of people. Salvation, the greatest miracle ever happening on a regular basis. Drawing that end times harvest. Amen. That's my prayer. I hope you join me in that prayer as well. And listen, have a blessed day. Amen. Have a blessed day. And remember, when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. God bless you and have a great day.